Hello, everyone. Welcome to the second part of the course. And well, well, here we'll start the modeling itself. As always, when doing low poly models, we'll work mainly with primitive objects and we'll start modifying them using the options this program offers. So let's open Cinema 4D and we'll start creating the flower pot of the cactus. For this, we'll place a cube, which we'll see in the middle of the scene. So let's start modeling this cube. First, we'll lift it a bit over the floor and start modifying this cube. As you know, if we select the object, we can see the option segments in the object panel and add one segment or several on each axis, okay? To see these segments, we have to enable garage shading so we can see those cuts, okay? We're going to set it to two segments on each axis and we will enable the Make Editable option, which we can activate using both in this icon or pressing C. So let's click on it. And now we can modify this geometry. Let's turn to the bottom polygons. Pressing space, we can start selecting these polygons. And with the letter T, we'll narrow the bottom. We can also leave the top, press E to select the arrows or this icon right here. You already know this. If you hover the mouse over the different options, you'll be able to see the keyboard shortcut for each of them. So let's stretch this up like this. Perfect. Let's select these and we'll right click and select Extrude Inner. As you know, the inner extrusion works in many ways. One of them is like this, or we can deselect this option here so we can make an individual extrusion on each polygon. In this case, it's our best interest to leave this box checked. Let's make a slight inner extrusion and now right click and we'll do another one. This time a regular one, downwards. Now we can make another extrusion and when it's around here, more or less, okay, protruding from the model, pressing T, we scale it down. Okay, we can lift this a bit and finish modifying it. We can also make the selections in many ways. We can detach the select menu and make a loop selection so we select these polygons faster. Now that we have this, the next thing we'll do is to place this model inside a subdivision surface. Here it is. Pressing Alt if we have the cube selected we automatically place the cube inside a subdivision surface, so we already activated the hierarchy properly. Navigate to subdivision surface, and here we can also lower the polygon level, both in the editor and in the render. And if we click on this option, we disable the subdivision surface, okay? So we can select the cube and we'll select these polygons here again and we'll cut it. This can be done in many ways. We can do it with a cut, which we know are, are here. Or we can also select the edges in ring selection mode. Then right click and connect points edges. This way we automatically make this cut. Notice that 
what we want to do is a low poly model. So be careful not to modify the subdivision editor value. Okay. If we set it to two, we can see it gains some polygons. Well, this would be the option to do it in render. Set it to two, but here we can leave it at one. Okay. Now we can also select the side edges, these ones right here. Let's disable this for a moment. Okay. We have to make another cut around here. In this case, we can do it either selecting the polygons or using the method I showed you earlier. In this case, we rather have more control of the cut, so we'll just use the knife. Select a loop option. And this way, we can automatically set the cut whatever we want. Here, for example. Now let's use loop selection and extrude these zones. In order for this not to happen and have all the rim extruded, we have to consider that the maximum angle has to be set quite high, for example, to 250. And now we can extrude with no hassle. Remember, we can select these options here too and edit them in order for them to be better placed. For example, this one. And this one right here. Let's activate subdivision surface. And we now start to see a more adequate shape. Another thing we can do, for example, is another cut downwards at the bottom. So when we activate the subdivision surface, this part here doesn't look that organic. We want sharper edges everything a bit more square. So for this, we'll select these parts here, right click, and we can select extrude inner, for example, like this, and slightly lower it. There. Let's check it out. We can see we have a more adequate shape. So we can leave it like this now, okay? All right, the next step would be to create some kind of floor, or we want some image of it anyway, at least this part here, because we'll place some rocks on top, so we'll easily create a disk, a primitive object. We'll lower the segments a lot. We'll leave it in 10. We'll make it bigger, okay? And this will be the part that will hold the cactus. Be careful, it doesn't go outside the flower pot. So we adjust it so it doesn't protrude at any, at any point. Okay? That's important. And remember, we can lower these segments perfectly. We can leave it at one, and that's enough. Okay. The next step will be to start modeling the cactus. So we're going to save what we're doing and let's keep at it. All right, as I was saying, let's continue with this before moving on to other parts of the scene. We can also modify a bit the shape of the flower pot, okay? We're going to make the edges shape more gradual so it has a more conical shape. For this, we'll switch to the front view, switch to vertex selection, hit the live selection tool, and disable for a moment the only select visible elements option. This way, we'll select all the elements despite we can't see them in the front view in this case. Choose any selection tool, the one you feel more comfortable with. In this case, the rectangle selection works better. And we select these points right here. And now simply with the scale tool, we can scale these points. Be careful because when we switch to one of these options, we'll have to uncheck this element again in order to select everything. There it is. Now we select all of them and with the scale tool, we scale this up a bit like this. So the base 
has a more conic shape. Now we obviously select the disk and we'll have to scale it a bit more. Good. The next step is to create a sphere. Okay, we place it on top and we'll decrease the segments to 10, all right? This way we'll simplify this sphere enough so we can work with it. Let's switch to the side view. Make the sphere editable and now we'll select the points like we did before. Mine disabling this element here. And with this element disabled, we delete these points. Now we select these points and these will be the ones we'll modify. We can do this in many ways. In this case, we'll rather select the edges instead, like this. And we'll extrude these edges. Select Extrude and we obviously scale like this if necessary in order to make the cactus shape. Obviously, we could play around with various shapes. We'll make this long enough and we'll scale the whole model down to see how it's coming together. This would be around here, more or less. So we keep extruding downwards. Okay. Let's see. Good, perfect. Something like this would be cool. Carefully, as always, we can hide the bottom part using these options here. Let's select this again. We'll move this up. We could cover this hole, but we don't really need it. You remember, the less polygons the image has, the better. We're working low poly, so we won't create any unnecessary object. This is hidden in the flower pot, so it's not necessary. Okay, now that we have the cactus, we'll do another thing since we're missing some segments or cuts here. So, in order to do this, we'll switch to polygon selection mode. We select all of this, then grab the knife. And here, in the Options panel, we can select the Plane Mode to add different cuts. Here we can select the plane in which the cut is made. In this case, we should use the X and Z plane. And in here, we can select the number of cuts, like for example, five cuts and the space between these cuts. Okay. So we can set it to seven cuts or maybe, or maybe six. Six is better, yeah. More or less around here. Six cuts spaced by around 70, and we make the cuts. Okay? These, as I say, you are free to make the cactus shape as you like. This is just an example, but the way we're working, we can do it in many ways. Good. Now, while playing with the polygons, as always, here in the selection, remember we detach the menu we can detach the panel from these options like this. Mark the loop selection tool and we'll select these points here, which are the ones we'll extrude. Like this, these sides. Now these parts here, the top of the cactus, we can join them, so we select the points. And using the weld tool, we can weld these points, like this. This way we get the main shape of the cactus. Well, we can make the flower pot visible again and check if the proportion is ideal or if we have to make it smaller or bigger, okay? Uh, 
All right, we're going to create the rocks that would go in this part here. We can do this easily by creating a cube. We'll set it to have a couple of segments in its three axes, X, Y, and Z. We make the object editable. And now we'll slightly modify this stone, okay? For example, we can make the top smaller. We can slightly rotate it like this. But well, this is completely free. It's just about making this shape with a few polygons. We can select the points and without moving them too much from their places, we can modify these points like this, as you see, randomly. Okay, now we select this cube and we hit the option Polygon Reduction. And we put these inside the cube. Notice that by doing that, we get to lower the quantity of polygons much more. We can modify this option from here. The bigger we set this value, the bigger the reduction of polygons will be until disappearing. As I'm saying, this is just a matter of lowering it to an acceptable level. For example, this, about 62. And this way, making the rock shape more random. We can now right click here and select current state to object. Click this option. And we get a copy of the cube completely modified. That is without the option here. We can delete these now and we have already finished the cube. I insist we can still modify some parts of the points. Okay, that's enough. We'll make this cube far smaller and it will be what we place in this part here. Now it's all about making a null group and start placing all these elements. We'll name it first and we'll place it inside. Well, now I'll do all these copies of the rocks to see how the scene looks. You don't need to do this yet. You will make all the copies of the cloned elements later, when we have extracted and painted all the textures in Photoshop. Why do we do it like this? Because if we don't, we'll have to do this with each stone or each element, okay? So I'm going to place all the rocks, but if you don't want to, just one copy will be enough for now. We'll leave this part of the course here, and we'll continue in the next lesson. See you later.